Friday after Ash Wednesday, and it's a very important day. Hmm. The people of Israel complained. Why is it that we fast and we pray, and God seems not to take notice? And God simply told them, it is not that I don't like fasting, but the problem is simply because when you fast, you allow so many other things to weigh in on your fasting. Instead of fasting from pleasures, fasting from quarrels and fighting and backbiting, many people combine the fasting with all these evil things. And the Lord says, when it is like this, you can't call such a day a day that is acceptable to the Lord. So the emphasis for today, friends, is about fasting, fasting, fasting. The same thing the disciples of John and the Pharisees came and asked us, why do we fast and your disciples do not fast? And Jesus simply told them, when the time comes for them to fast, they will fast. For now, I'm the bridegroom, and as long as I'm with them, there is no need for them to fast. I love what the author of this booklet did, this God's word. I love the particular reflection here because he did an in-depth analysis of the word fasting and abstinence. He took time to explain the fact that fasting is about the amount of food you take in, while abstinence is about the kind or the quality of food. In other words, you can talk of abstinence in terms of refraining from eating certain foods such as meat. But you know that either you are fasting or you are abstaining, Lent goes beyond bodily discipline. Otherwise, it will become dieting. So what we are doing in Lent is not just dieting. But dieting is equally important. But it goes beyond dieting. It sharpens your spiritual senses. It makes you more disposed to receive from God, especially to receive the Spirit of God. It makes you spiritually sensitive. And it enables you to gain control and mastery over the internal operations of the inner man. In other words, it makes you, it brings to order your interior life. How do we put it? You can say, let's put it for instance, you may be struggling with certain habits. Let's even leave habits. There are some people that there are certain food that if you tell them not to eat that food, that be say you have killed them with that. You don't kill them with that. That people who cannot do without swallowing in a day. They'll tell you, hey, if I don't swallow in a day, it's as if I've not eaten that day. There are people like that. So people are like, oh, if I don't eat rice, hey, so even if I don't just chew something. Now, chewing those things or swallowing, these are not bad in themselves. But I want to come to you from a, a, a more a spiritual angle. I want to tell you, any food you cannot do without, if there is a food that, as long as that food appears, you cannot be eat it. If the devil discovers that you have such a weakness for any food, for any delay, it could be ice cream, it could be anything at all. If there is anything at all in your life that if you don't take it, it's as if your body is, is, going, to, is going to decompose, as if you are completely destabilized, you can be sure that the way, if the devil tries to get you somewhere that way, he doesn't, he cannot. That is the very thing he will use to pin you down. The food you cannot resist while you are awake. It might be difficult for you to resist such a food in your dream. And I quite don't mind say, okay, I, I like a dikarigo. But if you don't know how to say no to a dikarigo, but when you can say, oh, I like good meat pepper soup, ah, once I see it, I'm fine. What does let's now help you to do? Begin to look at your life. In this life, there should be nothing that we cannot do without. 
So if you scan through your life and you notice that there is a particular thing that you see yourself doing them by default. It mustn't be about food. It could be anything at all. The thing that you cannot resist. Some people cannot resist anger. Especially if it is coming from a certain person. You know what you do in Lent? Those are the type of things you bring to God. And you begin to pray and fast from them. What happens? By the time you present it to God and pray earnestly about it, God gives you the strength to have mastery over it so that with or without that thing, you can, you can survive. There are some people that if they don't watch Z-Wall, it's as if their wall has collapsed. Yes, it can help you to relax. But don't forget that people also labor to put that in. So you'll be watching while they're making the money. Can't you know for some other means of being creative? What do you do with your uh, private time? It's not just about sitting down and sleeping and watching Z-Wall, Telemundo. Some people can actually forego mass if a certain match, a certain league is going to play during mass time. Champions League. They can say, let mass where we, we always have masses, but you don't always have this. But you can look for a way of handling this thing. If you have the money, you can do. Some people say, oh no, it must be life. If I don't want that match as this life. Well, I would have said, okay, with your explorer decoder, why don't you, you can go back and watch it, say, they want in life. So that means these people have decided to choose the things of the world, the things around them, the pleasures of life, or even the things they eat over and above their spiritual life. So what Lent helps you to do is to help you to gain control over your bodies and your desires. I want to sit down and read. I have exams. And my phone is distracting me. I feel like going on Facebook. What do you do? It helps you to prioritize. Right now, I have this to do. This phone call. You are not important to me. Whatever is there, you are not important to me. So I pick this phone. Phone, you were meant for me. I am not meant for you. You were meant to help me. As long as you are a distraction, I switch you off and I keep you and I get focused on my life. That's what we are talking about. That's the kind of life God is calling us to live. And now is the time to start disciplining. Yes, the readings of this pastor are talking about fasting from food. But over and above food, there are certain things that we should do to enhance the quality of our fasting, just as I tried to explain yesterday. So fasting is about the quantity of food. You can say, okay, I've been eating... Too much food, you can decide to cut down the quantity. You can now say, okay, maybe I will skip my breakfast and eat lunch if you are strong medically, if you are fit for that. Or you can just reduce the quantity and be going half rations. That's about fasting. But abstinence, the quality of the things you put in, into your body, you should be able to know what is good for you and what is not good for you. I still remember someone who who was at the point of death, and he was told, the only thing is just stop drinking beer. Every day we say, doctor, come, can't I just take just one bottle? Just one. Okay, Doc, I don't need one bottle, just, just a glass. Well, that means it has gone to a point of addiction. And you know what, once you're addicted to anything, once it is the time you're supposed to take it and you don't take it, your body will begin to shake. This is the time you can bring your body under subjection. And for me, this is the true explanation of dominion. What is that thing that once you see your whole body, you salivate, your body begins to quake? This is the time you can say no. It is the time for you to bring your external senses under the control of the inner power, the power of the mind. So I will not be like what St. Paul said, I desire to do this, but I see myself doing this. 
I want to be a good person, but I always see myself. That means such a person is living a disintegrated life and has lost insight. Lent is the best time for you to have what I call an integral healing. A comprehensive repackaging of the entire man. So that whatever the mind says this is what I want, the body obeys. St. Paul says, I box. Not like someone who is wasting the blow. No. I bring my body to subjection. The grace is available. Don't ask how bad it shall be. How will it be possible? Mary, when Mary asked the question, what did the angel answer? The angel simply said, don't worry. The Holy Ghost will come up. The power of the Most High will come upon you. The Holy Ghost will overshadow you. For with God, impossibility does not exist. And that's how he said, what God cannot do does not exist. It begins from the heart. How sincere you are. Whether you are sincerely and truly willing to have that shift. And remember, this year is for a higher dimension. So what are the baggages? What are the loads you are carrying that are weighing you that won't allow you to fly? Please start shedding those weights. Start shedding, start letting go of those things. Is there someone you are carrying a grudge you are bearing? Let's go. You need to be light to be able to fly higher. St. Paul says, I strive only for this one thing, that which lies ahead. I do my best to forget about everything that, I, that is in the past. Let the past go, including the hearts, including the inhumanity of people to you, towards you. It doesn't matter what they did to you. Just let go. Move forward. I believe there is more in the future. But for you to arrive at that future, now is the time to take that decision. And Lent is the best time for you to do it because of the availability of the grace and the spirit. I pray that you will not pass. I pray that you will not pass by this opportunity and you will not allow the opportunity for growth to pass you by. In Jesus' name. Amen. In the course of my personal prayers today, the Lord says I should, it was actually a message for me, but it's I should share with the house. Please, as you are praying, pray for me too. He said, I should pay attention and pray more for the wisdom to manage the gift of God. It was like, pray for the wisdom to manage the gift that God has given to you. That's the voice I heard. And then he said, pray also. Ask God to make you a solution provider. And now he said, ask God to make this ministry. That there are a lot of people who have suffered. They have gone to places. They have met so many people. They have gone far and wide. And yet nothing happened. Just pray in this length that as many as shall come in contact with you or shall follow the grace of this ministry, that this ministry will be their final bus stop. And so that's why I'm sharing with you. And of course, the husband man shall be the first beneficiary. So if you are here directly and you are joining me here, I pray that this ministry will be your final bus stop in Jesus' name. Whatever you bring to God in this ministry will be solved. Every problem will be solved. Doors shall be opened. Children shall be given. You Amen. shall experience deliverance. Amen. You shall experience open doors. Amen. You shall encounter favor. Amen. You will receive the visa you are looking Amen. for. Promotions. You shall be Amen. blessed politically, socially, financially, emotionally. All the blessings you need are being delivered to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, what should I say? Congratulations to you. Congratulations to you, Father. Congratulations to you once again. We just take a few of the prayer points from the booklet. I want you to repeat after me. Maybe two people from Zoom can help you in the repetition. Oh Lord, free me from stubborn and resistant problems. Can I hear somebody say that? Oh Lord, free me from stubborn and resistant problems. Oh Lord, free me from stubborn and resistant problems as I fast this period. Oh Lord, free me from stubborn and resistant problems as I fast this period. Two people can respond. Two people can respond simultaneously. Say, Oh Lord, free me from stubborn and resistant problems as I fast this period. Oh Lord, free me from stubborn and resistant problems as I fast this period. Amen. Now, for those of you Amen. on Facebook, please, and I want to encourage people in the house, 
I want to thank those who obeyed yesterday. Thank you for that obedience of yesterday. You did a nice job. Just as you did yesterday. Switch, some of you, switch over if you can get into Instagram. You are commenting from Instagram, you are commenting from Facebook. Just go there and put it seven times. Say, Lord, as I fast this length, free me from stubborn and resistant problem. Oh, Lord, as I fast in this period, free me from stubborn and resistant problem. That stubborn problem, that resistant problem, that and no matter how you do, no matter how you pray and fast, it's as if that thing doesn't want to go. We want to say that by the power of this Eucharist, that problem must go. That affliction must go. That darkness must be banished. That's what I want to put it down seven times. Lord, free me from stubborn and resistant problems. That's what I want you to put seven times. Put it down. Another very important prayer point. Just put it down seven times. Remember the first prayer was talking about that what we should do during fasting is to ask God to make us channels of blessing. We should share our food with others. We should be a source of blessing to others. There are many people who want to give, who really want to bless, but they don't have. I want you to say this prayer with me. My father, my father. 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 I receive the grace of overflowing blessing. I receive the grace of overflowing blessing. I'm actually on the prayer point number five. That's what I'm modifying. My father, my father. I receive the grace of overflowing blessing. My, my father, father, my father, my father, I receive the, I receive grace, of the grace of overflowing, overflowing blessings. And the ability to transmit them. And, and the ability, ability to transmit them. There is a teaching the Lord wants me, uh, wants me to give here. It's one thing for you to have something. It's another thing for you to enjoy what you have. And it is a third thing for you to be able to transmit that blessing to others. It takes the grace of God for you to have something. That's one. It takes even another higher grace of God for you to enjoy what you have. And still, a supernatural dimension for you to transmit what you have. So by this prayer, we are asking God, one, to give us overflowing blessing. Overflowing. When something says, my cup shall overflow. The overflow shall go to other people. When the cup is full, it overflows. <clears throat> so, I say to you, that by reason of this program, because of this encounter today, God is not just blessing you, but He's also making you a channel of blessing in the name of Amen. Jesus Christ. By reason Amen. of the blessing you are receiving this season, those who lack blessing shall come under your own canopy. It is because of the blessings of God upon my life that you are here. May God also make you a blessing to people around you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May God so bless you that you become a blessing even to your enemy. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. By reason of this holy mass. Every affliction in your life, every stubborn and resistant problem, sickness, a barren condition, the sore that has refused to be healed, that medical condition that has refused to be abated, that situation that has made you to live perpetually on drugs, that which has made you a familiar and constant face in the hospitals, in fact, the situation has made you to know all the nurses by name. 
Not that the knowing people is bad. But I am saying by the grace of God, that which has constantly given you sleepless nights, that which has strengthened your life constantly, is being led to rest in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That situation will never exceed and escape these 40 days. If Amen. Moses had a breakthrough within 40 days, if Elijah had an encounter with God within 40 days, if Jesus became an overcomer within 40 days of fasting, if Israel had a breakthrough and they entered into the promised land and the promise of God became fulfilled in their lives, I say to you, man, I say to you, woman, I say to you, brother, I say to you, sister, that by reason of this encounter and this gathering, your story is changing for the glory of God. You are moving from story Amen. to glory. Amen. You are moving from lack to abundance. You are moving from Amen. sickness to health. Oh, the Amen. word of God says, God can take a poor man from the dust heap. I beg him to sit in the company of princes. So there is an upliftment for you who have been downtrodden. Who have been suppressed. I speak and release the mantle upon you. So that through you, this mantle will flow into your family. There is a new dimension for you Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Every wound in your life, every wound in your heart, every wound in your foundation is being healed today. Amen. Your Amen. sources of finance, your sources of supply, are being repositioned in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. For you whose businesses have not been doing well, you have been laboring with that favor, I release the grace that would change that situation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I release children, what I call the marathon children. I release marathon children. I release the marathon children into the wombs of everybody under the sound of my voice now. Amen. For those of you who constantly obey, you obey the church when I speak, ask you to do something, you do it. You know what? As you obey me, as your priest and as your father, whenever you open your mouth, even before you open your mouth to speak, People shall obey you. People shall minister on your word. People shall come to your help. People shall celebrate Amen. you. When you knock, door shall be open in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is Friday. We have just finished the station of the cross. With all the graces that overflow from all the Catholic churches where stations of the cross have been done, I dispense those graces to you now. Amen. The word of God says, For the joy which lies ahead, Jesus willingly underwent the cross. He accepted suffering in view of the glory. Therefore, may that glory and the joy that Jesus saw, the joy of salvation that he saw, and decided to become man to suffer in obedience, may that joy of the Lord be your strength. May the glory of the Lord be your strength. Amen. May the fullness of the joy of salvation Amen. be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. And may the Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. For the beauty of the earth, for the beauty of the skies, for the love which from earth over and around us lies, Christ 
that by sacrifice of yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. <clears throat> May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. Let's pray. We offer, O oh Lord, the sacrifice of our Lenten observance, praying that it may make our intentions acceptable to you and add to our powers of self-restraint through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that free from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift prayer by setting down your spirits upon them like a new fall, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was preparing that willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was said, then he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, though thus in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ will be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Ignatius, and Anselm, and bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints of bliss you throughout the ages, we are married to be grace to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we then to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen deliver us Lord. we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we always free from sin and save from all distress as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forevermore Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with your ways. Love of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Love of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Love of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Crucified, laid behind the stone, you leave to die, rejected and alone, like a rose, trampled on the ground, you took the fall. A thought of me, a bobo, crucified, laid behind the stone. You live to die, rejected and alone, like a rose. Trampled on the ground, you took the fall, and thought of me, a bobo. Dear friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I will just let down our roof, but only say the word, and our souls shall be healed. May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ which we celebrate and receive in this Mass, bring you healing, deliverance, make you fruitful, prosper you in everything you do. Let it 
open doors that have been shut against you. Let it bring love, peace, and unity to your family. Let it change your story. Let it give you the grace of dominion, the power to gain mastery over the senses, <clears throat> to gain mastery over your appetites, to be able to fast in a way that pleases God. And that by the power of this holy sacrifice, the grace and the blessings of this season will never pass you by and your family. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I encourage you right now, straight forward your hand, touch your screen. Ask of the Lord whatever favor you are you, you desire. He is here for you. He is here to change your story. He is here to redeem you. He is here to save you. He will come save you. He will come and save you. Say to the weary one, Your God will surely come. He will come and save you. He will come save you. He will come and save you. Say to the weary one, Your God will surely come. He will come and save you. He will come save you. He will come and save you. Say to the weary one, your God will surely come. He will come and save you. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. By the power of this sacrifice and the reception of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Let there be multiple marital connections. Let there be marital breakthroughs. Let there be financial breakthroughs. Let there be healing of body, soul and spirit. Let there be deliverance and total liberation. When people enjoy admissions, people have visas and the applications granted. Those who have applied for contracts, you'll be favored. Those of you believing God for, uh, for political breakthrough, receive them now. Those who are believing God for change and changes in other, in other dimensions of their lives, this is the time. Receive it. Above all, may the Lord grant you the dominion that you need. In the name of the Father, you are blessed in the name of the Son and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so, good night to everybody. Wishing you the best.
of this day. As you lie down to sleep, may Lord grant you a quiet night at the perfect end. Amen.